Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in life, things aren't what they seem. Right? Um, I'm telling you that some of the biggest names, some of the most influential names in the sport of boxing are guys who you almost never see on camera. You almost never hear their names in the paper. Right? Understand that there are representatives who are on camera that sometimes are placed on camera by much more powerful people who are behind the scenes, who prefer to do their work in private, right? That doesn't mean that there's anything shady or untoward in what they're doing. It just means that they prefer to operate in privacy because privacy gives you more options. It gives you more freedom, right? You can have a regular life. You can walk through an airport and no one's going to stop you. No one's going to ask you about fights and stuff like that. You can go out with your wife, your kids. You can attend a ball game. Few people are going to recognize you, right? You can be at boxing events and no one understands the level of sway that you have, right? Now, let me say this. Deontay Wilder. Many people are talking about Deontay Wilder's future. He's the first American World Heavyweight Champion in a long time, right? So people are speculating on whether or not Deontay Wilder is going to fight Vladimir Klitschko, who issued a statement the other day that said that if he were to fight Wilder, it would be a pay-per-view bonanza, right? It'd be box office gold. What I want people to understand is that some of the same people advising Vladimir Klitschko are also advising Deontay Wilder. Right? Don't be fooled by promoters who hop in rings after fights and stuff like that. Don't be confused by fancy hairstyles and seeing the same three or four names every time you look on uh, boxing websites. Um, you know, understand there are a whole group of people who are in the background who have big power, and one of them is Shelly Finkel. Right now, those in the know understand that Shelly Finkel was a giant in music. Then he migrated to boxing. By the way, if you're really keeping track of what's happening off you know, camera, you'll realize that music has taken over the boxing world, right? Many guys who are involved in the music game, and I'm not talking about just guys who have high profiles, Jay-Z, 50 Cent, James Prince. I'm also talking about Al Heyman, Shelley Finkel, right? Cedric Kushner, who just passed, right? Understand, Shelly Finkel was a giant in music. Then he came over to boxing. Understand, years ago, if you Google him, you'll actually see that Shelly Finkel uh, used to, you know, have an association with Oscar De La Hoya's family. Right? Well, Shelly Finkel has advised many people in boxing. He's been an advisor to the Klitschko brothers for years. He's now an advisor to Deontay Wilder. Right? Just to understand that many of the people in the room during these negotiations not only know each other, but many of these people are the same people. Right? Just like in the UK, you had the same promoter promoting Carl Froch and James DeGale. Right? Understand some of the advisors advising Vladimir Klitschko are the same people advising Deontay Wilder, right? Don't assume that what's 
published in the boxing press necessarily gives you the entire story, right? Now, I personally believe whatever is being said in public, and obviously in public, you know, when a fighter has just won a share of the world heavyweight title, people will, you know, line up and say, hey, he is great, blah, 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 right? If you're a member of the fighter's entourage, right, you're paying your bills by pleasing the fighter, telling the fighter, hey, you are great, your ego is right, you are the man, you are the future of boxing, right? But if you're an experienced advisor in the sport, you're a little bit more hesitant, right? You might understand that Deontay Wilder is a young guy with a raw game, with an underdeveloped game, who might have problems with a more seasoned pro like Vladimir Klitschko. How do you know this? Because you're an advisor to Klitschko and you're actually there seeing Klitschko train, right? So my own belief is yes, Deontay Wilder Klitschko would be a huge box office fight. No question about it. But I believe that those who actually care about the long-term career of Deontay Wilder, who see Wilder as a guy who could, right, grow his game, make some money in the process before he takes the big step up, right? I think they're privately telling Wilder, hey, proceed with caution, right? You want to fight guys right now who aren't as explosive as Vladimir Klitschko. Put another way. Kubrat Pulev was unbeaten when he hopped in the ring with Vladimir Klitschko recently. Hasn't his career been set back quite a bit by getting demolished by Vladimir Klitschko? I mean, demolished. Not only that, you know, aren't you a little concerned about the beating Kubrat Pulev took? In other words, you wouldn't want Pulev's next fight to be against a George Foreman type hitter. Now, would you? after he gets drilled and dropped multiple times in that fight, right? So just understand that a lot of the names you're hearing in the press are just the public faces of bigger names in the background. Let's shift gears for a second. Here in the United States, we just saw the Super Bowl, right? Now, we all understand that the NFL got paid billions of dollars by the networks, right? So the networks could obtain the rights to the Super Bowl, right? Let's think about the risk. Who is taking on the risk involved in the telecast? In other words, if you know the sports league has already received billions of dollars, then it's the network taking on the risk of making money on the telecast. They're the ones selling the ads, right? That's the question you need to ask. Who is selling the ads, right? Understand all of the risk is with the network, right? Because, of course... The NFL, whether the game is a great game, as it was, or a bad game, the NFL has already been paid. They've already cashed out in large part, right? I know there's some smaller deals. There's NFL Network. Okay, fine. But the league's already cashed out. They're already guaranteed a profit because they've been paid by the network. Now, let's turn the model on its head. What if instead of the league getting paid billions of dollars, right, to allow the network to show the league's championship game, what if instead the league came to the network and said, hey, we'll buy the time, right? Think about that. We'll buy the time. Now let's just think in terms of the wealth shift because it's it's sizable. 
right? Understand if I go to a network and I say, hey, I want to buy four hours of time, right? The network knows you're going to get paid for the four hours, right? They know that. So they can figure out their costs and stuff like that. And then they can say, well, we would sell you the four hours of time for X dollars. If the network feels that the show I'd put on the network would actually lift the profile of the network, right? They might even give me a discount. Because the idea is the network's interested in its reputation. And if I'm enhancing its reputation, well, that's something of value to the network. So they might factor that in in the bill they present me with. Right? They might also know, too, that I'm approaching other networks looking to buy a four-hour block of time or whatever it is. Right? Understand, if the NFL did that, then they would keep all the profits from selling ads during that four-hour period. Right? They might get nationwide distribution. And if they're willing to do the marketing, etc., right, they would then get all the profits. So if 110 million people watch the telecast and if advertisers are spending millions of dollars per 30 seconds to have their ads on the show, the NFL would be collecting all of that money. Now, why is that relevant in boxing? That's because that's the deal that Al Heyman, a guy who, like Shelley Finkel, likes to be off camera, right? Figuratively speaking, right? Al Heyman has literally bought time on NBC, right? He's bought a block of time. They've sold him the time. And, of course, in that time, Al Heyman is going to present World Championship Boxing, some of the biggest names in the sport, in highly competitive matchups. Now, understand the risk involved, right? Al Heyman, of course, has to put on shows that are going to attract you, the public, because if no one watches the show, Al Heyman still has to pay the network. The network still gets paid. Right? The risk is on him. So he has to attract you, the viewer. He also has to attract the ad dollars. Right? To get back his investment, what he's paid to the network. He needs to attract advertisers, corporate sponsors, business partners who want to tie in with the telecast. Right? Now just understand, just like the NFL, quite frankly, would have more money if they bought the time on a network. Right? Bought the time then sold the ads if they were able to attract 110 million people, right? What Super Bowls are attracting these days, right? Just like the NFL would make more money, right? Because they'd be cutting out a portion of the network's profit by taking on more risk. Understand Al Heyman could make more money, right? If he's able to attract you, the boxing fan. Now, this is a breathtaking moment for boxing. I suspect this is going to be a box office bonanza, right? What it's going to do is it's going to attract a lot more money to boxing. What it's going to do is it's going to attract a lot more advertising to boxing, a lot more players to boxing. Let me tell you how things are here on YouTube. There's a company out there that I'm sure you've heard of, Google. 
And what they actually do is they actually get corporate sponsors for webcasts. They ask you, can we put ads, right, before your video or in the middle of your video or sometimes on the bottom of the screen as your video is playing, sometimes after the video. Right, they'll say, hey, can we put ads on your video? And of course, the payoff is you actually get some of the ad revenue. Right, understand the Googles of the world. The companies that embed ads, their profiles have now just jumped exponentially. Right? The editorial discretion of networks, by contrast, has dropped because that editorial discretion is now moved over to the entrepreneur who has bought the time on the network. Right? So pay a close eye to what's happening. The Al Heyman series kicks off in March. Right? Understand, too, other people are going to be involved, right? There's obviously going to be a promoter, boxing promoter, promoting events, right? And so you're going to have a new set of promoters, right? You're going to have entrepreneurs buying time from networks, right? Advertising the event in the way they see fit in conjunction with the network, who, of course has a vested interest in what's presented over their airwaves. Right? It's a big moment for boxing. Let me close by saying this. Miguel Cotto. Cotto Promotions. Understand, we know Miguel Cotto as a future Hall of Fame fighter. Right? As a champion in several weight classes. As a man who, somehow, in one career, has fought Paulie Malinashi, Zab Judah, Manny Pacquiao, Antonio Margarito, Floyd Mayweather, Sergio Martinez, Shane Mosley, right? The same guy. Well, understand, Miguel Cotto also is a promoter. And he's just signed a deal with Univision Puerto Rico, where he's going to have shows highlighting Puerto Rican fighters. And understand, Puerto Rico has a long history of great fighters, right? A long history, right? Now, I don't have the details on exactly what's going on there. But the question for the public is, really, you know, when you see a guy like Miguel Cotto, and he's now involved in entrepreneurial ventures behind the camera, so to speak. Right? Before he was the talent on camera. He was the fighter in the ring. Now he's behind the camera. Right? And given that boxing right now is changing rapidly. We know that because old business models are falling by the wayside. Now you have entrepreneurs buying times on networks. Just to understand that Kodo himself now is a brand right also understand that when you're thinking about a multi-million dollar deal involving Miguel Cotto you have to ask yourself the next question is he fighting or is he promoting the event right also to the press the people who actually do journalism and do more than I do here online, I just comment on it, for investigative journalists. Figure out the details on that Kodo deal with Univision. Is he more of a spokesman for the outfit? Or is he actually someone who has bought time on the network? and will be responsible for selling the ads like Al Heyman's group will be doing. Right? Understand these business models are quickly evolving. 
understands that yesterday's great fighter could be tomorrow's great promoter or tomorrow's great manager or tomorrow's great entrepreneur buying time on networks. Folks, it's the 21st century and boxing, more than most sports, is evolving. Let me hear from you. If there are other trends in boxing that you think we need to highlight, that you're keeping an eye on, that you feel actually might change the foundations of the sport. I hope you discuss them here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.